I'm with Jason Rod and Gail Dewing, who bought a derelict house which they plan to renovate and add to with a new contemporary extension. I want them to meet someone who's carried out a similar project and can give them some great advice. All right, guys, this is the property I want you to see. Detached red brick house dating back to 1903. It was empty for a whole year. Uh, it was in a pretty poor condition. Peter and his wife worked on it. I mean, he dedicated himself to it for a whole year just to do it up. He's been working on it in bits ever since. So a lot of work's gone into it. I think we should go and say hello. Okay. okay. Interior designer Peter Tasker and his wife Vicky fell for the red brick Victorian detached house at first sight. The front of the house was what first um, drew us to it because there were so many nice architectural features. But then the inside was quite a different story, wasn't yeah, it's it? Very damp and so there's lots of cracks everywhere. The couple bought the house in 2005 for £300,000 and to save money they decided to live in the property whilst work was ongoing. Well, we got the keys, didn't we? And then we literally all moved in and started working. Yeah, we piled all our possessions in this room and started painting throughout. Impressively, Peter did much of the work himself, only calling in the professionals for the specialist jobs. We wouldn't have been able to do the project without us basically deciding we're going to do the work ourselves. Yeah. We dug out the floor, we mixed the gobbo. We, you know, we did, I mean, all of it, didn't we? Yeah. And for those who don't know, Gobbo is concrete, and these people clearly know their stuff. So Peter's meeting us today to offer some ideas and inspiration for Gail and Jason. Quite an extension, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's fantastic space. Yeah. So it strikes me as something quite similar to your plans, and it's, it's extending out the back. Mm -hmm. It's getting that width and that one big sort of open plan, big mm. space. As soon as you walk in, you feel it's cosy, yet light and airy mm. at the same time. Um, and for me, this is definitely the, the aspect that I wanted or want. Um, you know, you walk in and there's a wow factor yeah. when you walk in. And the light, have you thought about what, where you'd bring light in or how you'd use windows in your extension? And seeing the amount of natural light that you managed to bring in here, it's something mm. going to maybe pay a bit more attention to before we make any big decisions on that because it, it is really impressive and it helps to set the whole room off with yeah. so much natural light, it's lovely. You guys are looking at energy and heating solutions. So what are you, you're on gas here, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, and what did you think of using anything else or going sort of for any particular green technologies? I looked into solar panels, I looked into turbines, but it was just the initial outlay was, was too much in every case. Having the underfloor heating, that, that makes a big difference. Is that throughout here or throughout the, the ground floor? Throughout the ground floor. Yeah. The beauty of this is you, you've got your insulation and then a slab of concrete. And what, what happens is it heats that concrete and then that becomes like a storage heater. So how sympathetic did you keep the look of it from the outside? Did you sort of try and stay with the red bricks? That's certainly what you're thinking, mm. isn't it? Yeah. We went with the imperial sized brick. Mm. I sourced uh, the blue engineering bricks with the chamfer, mm -hmm. um, which I had to have handmade. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the bricklayer that did really good, sort of, they call it dental work, to try and match the existing corbelling and that sort of thing. And yeah, I think, I think when, you, when you look, it, it is in keeping. Yeah, that's what you're thinking, to be as sympathetic yeah. as possible. Yeah. yeah. These guys are thinking of getting you know, a bathroom, a bedroom ready, and trying to move in as soon as possible to mm -hmm. be there. Yeah. Is that something you'd advise? Yes, yeah, I, I would, because otherwise you, you're paying for two accommodation and, and you'd be heating two areas too. And as a reality check, how tough is it? I mean, it's, it's not that pleasant, is it? It isn't. You, you, you just have to enjoy your food with dust in and, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and, and enjoy doing a lot of cleaning. Yeah. And, but you do end up with some nice results. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to put you off, no, I, I sense, no. you sort of determined anyway. Yeah, it's determined and um, we, we both know it'll be worth it in the end and, you know, it's, it's the end game, isn't it? Well, I love this, I think it's an amazing space, and as you said when we came in, it really does have that wow factor. Mm -hmm. But um, I think we should also look around a bit further. So, okay. should we pop to the front of the house? Yes, yeah, you lead the way. Peter and his wife carried out a complete renovation from the ground up, creating a truly stunning family home. Right, so this is your sort of front sitting room. Huge project, it's a big house. What did you budget for that? Uh, we, we budgeted about 40,000 initially, um, as the, the project has taken more and more time. Uh, obviously, we've eaten into that, but uh, we seem to have pretty much on budget. So Really? Yeah. 
How much of it was spent on the extension as a proportion of that? Um, I think the whole extension, the, the, just the infrastructure of getting it, the, the, it built was about 15,000. It's encouraging you can add on such a big space like you have um, for that kind of budget. When you first moved in, did you have a clear idea that you were going to keep the old part of the house very much separate or did you feel that you wanted to integrate? Well, we always quite like the idea of eclectic in the sense that you may have old pieces and old bits and then, you know, you're walking into the new but you've still got old elements there. I think here it's quite unapologetic, quite honest, isn't it? You just go from quite it's, new to a bit older. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to feel that you have to sort of... Yeah. Stage it. Yeah, stage it, exactly, yeah. yeah. We've got a 200-year-old cottage and it, it's going to... You know, we can't modernise it. We don't want to modernise it. Um, I, I feel quite comfortable with it, don't you? The, mm -hmm. the change in yeah. between the two. I think it's quite nice that you've got effectively two houses. Well, Peter, thank you for sharing us around. Amazing to see that kitchen and how well also the rest of the house works with it. So it's been, been really great. I hope it's been very useful, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. That's thank really you nice. very much. I've been with Jason and Gail, who've taken on an empty property and have been getting invaluable advice from someone who's been through a similar renovation. So guys, having had a good look round, what are your thoughts as you leave? Initially, I just thought, wow, the house is so different to ours. But actually, it, the concept is, is very, very similar, you yeah. know, old to new. Um, I'm very, very impressed with the extension. And a few ideas there about how you move from old period interiors to very modern contemporary. It doesn't have to be that obvious, does it, from old to new, and I shouldn't worry too much about the, the contrast, as long as it's light, airy and livable. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think in the end, it comes down to confidence. It's just as different. You just go through yeah. and it's fine. It doesn't yeah. jar. It's OK. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's two points for me. I'm sort of going away um, uh, happier that we've decided on floor heating for the large kitchen space, but also that we need to go away and think about uh, perhaps more natural light yeah. mm -hmm. than yeah. give it more thought, definitely. Yeah, it wasn't even on our radar, was it? Really? No, I, I, th I think it's been really interesting just to hear it from someone else's perspective who's been through it. Mm. Yeah, you're not alone. People go through this all the time. It just shows the decisions you've thought through are ones that other people have considered as well. So hopefully there's a lot of encouragement there for you. Well, good luck with it. It's such a lovely cottage you've got. You're working on, you're doing all the right things, and I, I really hope today helps. So. Um, yeah, best of luck. Thank you. Thanks very much. It's been really great for Gail and Jason to see this place, somewhere that matches their aspirations in so many ways. And today, some great advice, encouragement and inspiration they can carry with them through every stage of their renovation. And what an exciting journey it's going to be as they try to create their perfect home. Things get lyrical later as Sandra asks the new Trix team to him reinvestigate the case of a murdered poet. That's here at nine. Next today on BBC One, turning collectibles into a treat with a friend. Cash in the attic. <laughs>